Sonic, the heart of your system. Hey and welcome to a new video here on my channel. As you can see, we're not in my normal environment. We're today at Dan Cop's place. If you're familiar with the international extreme overclocking scene, you should be aware of who he is and what he is doing. But um, we know each other for a very long time and he started extreme overclocking like five or six years ago. And today we want to test the new 28 core unlock Xeon with liquid nitrogen. So I'm actually sitting on about 30 liters of liquid nitrogen, which we will use later today to test how high we can push the 28 core unlocked Xeon. But before we get to that, um, let's just hear a little bit about who Dancop is and how he started. So tell us a little bit about yourself. Oh uh, yeah, as, as you mentioned already, I'm, I'm uh, in the XOC scene for right now five to six years, maybe I, I think six or six and a half already and um, yeah I was uh, overclocking before with just water and and some chilled water afterwards and then very very cold water like minus 30 degrees but I was always afraid to to kill some hardware so um, yeah I was a bit yeah I don't know let's say a bit like a <laughs> <laughs> um, might, might be that I have to beep this yeah okay <laughs> um, so uh, some, sometimes it can happen that you damage hardware with extreme overclocking, but not when you when you are careful. So, uh. yeah, I remember that he was always telling us that yeah, you know, extreme overclocking looks very interesting, but I don't want to kill my hardware. But then the other day, I think it was like six years ago, yeah. I came to his place and just brought a liquid nitrogen container and some dry ice. And I think it was was it Ivy Bridge E? Was it Sandy Bridge yes, E? Yes, no, it was Ivy Bridge E, a forty nine sixty X. Yeah. And uh, so that, that was the first time we overclocked. It was just a, just a CPU. And one week later, we tried four-way SLI with four Titans <laughs> on liquid nitrogen together with the 4960X. So that was my yeah. start in the extreme overclocking scene. Yeah, yeah that's a very good, a good point to start. If you're new to this and you want to have a very chilled start, you should go yeah. for quad SLI. Yeah. It was always a lot of fun. Would not do it again. No. So <laughs> I saw that you have this OC World Cup first place trophy standing next to you. Can yeah. you tell me a little bit about this? Yeah, I'm the, I'm the current uh, champion from the Gieske um, OC World Cup, uh, which is an annual competition that, that um, takes place in, in, in Taipei, always during the Computex for like five days, I think. And uh, in my opinion, this is the hardest competition you can you can join, because of the all the competitors you have there. Um, there are definitely the best overclockers, and then you have a lot of overclockers in the qualification. So only in the qualifier there were like 140 people attending the qualification, and only six can do it to a Taipei. So that's really hard. What was the the price for the first place? Ten thousand US dollars. So it was good. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So as I said before, we will now take the um, Dominus Extreme motherboard and the new Xeon, well, unlock Xeon 28 core CPU. Mounted on the CPU, we have a special mounting mechanism we can use to push the CPU into the socket, not as you've seen in my previous deleting video where I was mounting the CPU with a water cooler, where the water cooler is pressing the CPU down in the socket. We have a special mounting frame this piece of aluminium here which we will use to press the CPU in the socket hopefully it will work hopefully we will have all the memory channels that are left and then we'll see how high we can push the CPU with LN2. So before we can start we have to remove this mounting frame which is normally used to mount the CPU cooler but we have to re remove this first in order to be able to mount this mounting frame which is then used to push the CPU into the socket. So for normal overclocking I would always recommend to go for liquid metal if you deleted your CPU. For extreme overclocking we will use a conventional thermal paste, so cryonaut in this case. I already deleted the CPU as I said before, it's the same CPU which we used for the deleting video where we tested with liquid, liquid metal. So today with cryonaut conventional thermal paste because liquid metal would harden under low temperature and would be very bad performance. So we will go for conventional thermal paste.
Before you start posting some verge comments about my thermal paste application, let me tell you that for extreme overclocking, we need a lot more thermal paste than what you do for a daily usage, simply because we need a bigger surface for heat transfer between the chip and the heat spreader to prevent thermal paste cracking. So CPU is mounted in the socket with the socket mounting frame. I hope the pressure is enough. I tightened as much as I could. If the pressure is not enough, the board will simply not start and we will probably not even get the standby power, which we can check on the buttons over here. And I also hope that we connected the correct 24 pin connector. We are actually only using one PSU. We don't, we don't need two PSUs for this mainboard, even on LN2. So now that the CPU is successfully booting with this mounting configuration, we will mount the LN2 container. This is the Beast Threadripper Edition, which you should know from my previous videos like Epic Overclocking. We will mount this container now on the mounting frame with four threaded rods and then put some paper towel around just to catch some um, condensation water in case we have some on here and then we are ready to go for the LN2. Similar to our situation underneath the heat spreader, we also typically apply a lot more thermal paste on top of the heat spreader, but the container typically takes care of that, so more mounting pressure will just push out any additional thermal paste that's too much. Compared to any other platform, we really have to tighten the container onto this socket. So typically we don't tighten the thumb nuts down completely onto the springs, but on this socket we really have to do it, otherwise we are not able to boot with all memory channels active. Once the pot is mounted, we will put some additional towels around the container just to catch some drops if condensation occurs. But of course, we already insulated the motherboard with Vaseline. For easier handling, we are pouring the liquid nitrogen into a box first before we pour the LN2 from the box into the thermos flasks. That's just for easier handling for us. And don't be afraid that we don't wear gloves because the light and frost effect will help us and protect our fingers. If you have some small spills, some small drops of liquid nitrogen touching your hand, don't worry, it's not dangerous, it doesn't hurt yourself because the temperature difference between your hand and the liquid nitrogen is so high that you will have a gas layer building up instantly between the liquid and your hand and this gas layer will protect you. Now we're ready to go and we can start to cool down the container to about minus 30 degrees Celsius where we start with the overclocking. Once we hit a temperature of about minus 30 degrees Celsius, we started with our initial tests, so 4.5 gigahertz at 1.35 volt, and you can already see that the CPU is drawing about 74 amps from the 12 volt connectors of the PSU, and we have a quite impressive score of 6,500 points in Cinebench R15. Then we kept lowering the temperature of the container and therefore of the CPU and kept increasing clocks. 
At 4.7 GHz, 1.35 volt, and at CPU pot temperature of minus 50 degrees Celsius, we already have a power draw of about 75 to 77 amps, and that's already over 900 watt pulling from the EPS and the six pin connectors of the PSU. Obviously, the total power consumption of the CPU is lower because we have some switching losses across the VRM. So typically, let's say we have 900 watt power consumption total over the 12 volt rail, then we might have only a CPU power draw from something between 800 to 850 watts. And then we will probably have something like, I don't know, 50 watt power consumption of the VRM or switching losses of the VRM. Then we lowered the temperature to minus 95 degrees Celsius roughly, increased the clock to 5.5 gigahertz on the CPU, stayed at 1.35 volt because yeah, more voltage equals higher power draw equals higher temperature across the course. And we can see at 5.5 gigahertz, we already have a score of over 8,000 points in Cinebench R15. Unfortunately, 5.6 GHz was not stable with this CPU in R15, even after we increased the core voltage to up to 1.45 volt. But if we increase the core voltage to 1.45, the power draw was absolutely insane. So 5.5 GHz at 1.45 volt, you can see the current clamp shows over 100 amps to the VRM. So that's over 1200 watt drawing over the VRM of the CPU. So you can estimate that the CPU power draw is something of like 1100, 1150 watt, depending on the switching losses of the CPU VRM. Then we tried to max out the frequency of the CPU and could achieve a maximum of 5.8 gigahertz across all 28 cores. The overclocking legend Shamino from Taiwan also pushed the CPU. He actually spent quite a lot more time on the CPU. He spent months trying to push the CPU and he managed 6.5 GHz across all 28 cores, which is absolutely insane. Just so you get an idea, the 32 core Threadripper could achieve a maximum clock of 5.955 GHz. Shamino also performed some Geekbench 3 multi benchmark runs and achieved 133k points in Geekbench 3, while the maximum score that was ever achieved with the 32 core Threadripper was about 115k. In Cinebench R15, the highest score ever achieved with the 32 core Threadripper was 8,543 points. And this is a bit higher than what we saw with the 28 core unlocked Xeon. So you see there is about 150 points difference. And that's mainly because obviously the Threadripper has four more cores and that's a real benefit for this CPU in Cinebench R15. Overall, insane platform, a lot of fun to play around with this, especially because the power consumption is so high and it's a real challenge to keep the CPU cold even with liquid nitrogen. But then also the socket is a real pain in the ass when it comes to mounting and getting your memory channels to run. I hope you enjoyed this video, got some cool insights from liquid nitrogen overclocking of the new 28 core unlock Xeon. Let me know what you think about the video and also about the CPU down in the comments. See you soon.